What a cotton bowl it was. Eddie Rodosovich, George Stoy here from uh, about right where Nick Anderson caught the game-winning touchdown with how many, however many, 15 seconds left in the game. And George, uh, another just thriller of a day here at the State Fair of Texas. The Cotton Bowl, uh, it adds another kind of chapter to what is already a very historic, history-driven rivalry. I was going to talk my way through that for a second. It's unbelievable, though. Uh, I, where do you even want to begin? Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel, for all the stuff that has been said about him throughout his career at Oklahoma, uh, his moment was today, right, Eddie? We knew coming in that this was going to be a game that uh, could define his career at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, he was fantastic, Eddie. Sure, did he miss some throws here and there? Did the offense struggle at times? Sure. But a minute, what, 17 left? He leads him down the field with no timeouts. Uh, looks like he's going to get sacked, you know, there at the three-yard line or whatever it was, and finds Nick Anderson. Uh, the, the guy was unbelievable today, and there's a lot of people that need to eat some crow on Dylan Gabriel. And you, even, you, even, you and I need to eat some crow. We, I think we both picked Texas to win yeah. this game. Sure. Oklahoma was fantastic today. They, they responded. They got up. They really controlled the game yeah. uh, until the fourth quarter. That's what going to be so frustrating about it and even all the way back into the first quarter you have the two interceptions it seemed like the first six minutes of the game took like an eternity yeah and then all of a sudden you look up and it's 14 to 10 you're behind yeah. and then you are almost tied at halftime and there were just so many ebbs and flows of this game uh, that you could point to that is okay maybe it's not their day and they just weren't able to take advantage of some things but in the end, as you said, Dylan Gabriel was fantastic. Special teams was a problem. I think that that kept Texas really in the game at points. So you think of the block punt early in the game. Um, you think of the, the missed field goal that Zach Schmidt had. They had some missed opportunities, but Oklahoma stuck with it. The defense was fantastic. You talk about the goal line stand. Uh, I think was that in the fourth quarter as well. That was a massive momentum play, obviously, in the game. They, they hold Texas to multiple field goals in the red zone. Uh, they were just really, really solid today. And then the offense, Dylan Gabriel, I think 113 yards on the ground. He was fantastic running the football today, most rushing yards in his career. I it just, I don't know, Eddie, I, it's it's almost uh, hard to talk about because it's like, where, where does this team go next? Because it's just, this was such a monumental win. So many people th thought they could not win this type of a game, that they hadn't played anybody yet. And that's a good Texas football team. Yeah. That's a team that I, I am assuming they're going to see again later this year. But uh, just a, a massive, massive win for Brent Venables in this program. And I think you could feel it after the game. I mean, just talking to all the players on the podium afterwards, uh, this was something that, you know, even going back into last year with the 49 uh, nothing loss, the embarrassing way that that went down, uh, I thought it was interesting after the game, and I think it's become kind of a storyline, was uh, the med balls, med balls that Oklahoma uses with Jerry Schmidt during the summer. Uh, tell us a little bit about kind of the backstory on that. Yeah, so Andrew Rain was the one, I think, telling us, but I guess every Tuesday they do an ab exercise with the med balls. They typically only do about 25. Uh, they've been doing 49 ever since the end of last season. So it's interesting because all week leading up, we're like, was there any reminders you guys had? No, no, we erased that. Yeah. But uh, it was, it's was it been a constant reminder, even this last Tuesday, from my understanding, they were doing the 49 med balls. So I think there's just a lot of guys that – Big time validation today when you talk about guys that were on this football team a year ago. A Danny Stutzman comes in, plays fantastic today. Uh, a Dylan Gabriel, who doesn't get to play in the game a year ago, comes in and plays, you know, probably the best game of his career given the situation. I just, I think it was a huge stepping stone for this group and the guys that were on that team last year to continue to believe in the process uh, and come in here today. And really, I, I don't know about shock the world, Eddie. Because, you know, the line was, what, five and a half, whatever it was. I don't think it's a huge upset. But there was a lot of people, our, ourselves included, that didn't think they could win this type of a game. Uh, and all of a sudden we're talking about the process of the Brent Venables era being sped up a little bit. A marquee win. Uh, a marquee win in what was his 19th game as Oklahoma's head coach. Uh, I think the people had been waiting for these moments. Uh, kind of the, the pandemonium that was right here in this end zone with Oklahoma fans uh, just absolutely going crazy there in the fourth quarter. But, you know, there were points throughout the game that it could have slipped away. Yep. And they found ways to not only get off the field, they came up with the stop in the uh, the goal line at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And that's right when you thought things were starting to click for Texas. They were the 
ball a little bit. They had moved all the way down the field. And then enter Kemp Lewis and the run defense. I, You know, the way that Oklahoma controlled the line of scrimmage today, I think was maybe the biggest surprise with as much as we had talked about on here on the Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel, on the unofficial 40, on the podcast this week. That was a big kind of decided disadvantage going into the game. And they played their ass off today. How about them being able to run the ball a little bit today? Now, they, they weren't able to, you know, gash them except for Gabriel, right? But they ran for over 200 yards. I think the second most yards they've run for this season other than against Arkansas State. Against a really good Texas run defense. You you said it. Line of scrimmage. How about them getting, was it five sacks on yours today? Yeah. And they weren't really bringing extra pressure. They were just beating guys. I mean, Ethan Downs was fantastic. Another guy that a lot of people out there have to eat some crow on. I mean, he was he played the best game of his career today. Uh, you know, P.J. out of bar. Barway got a lot of pressure. Uh, they were so good up front on both sides of the ball. They really controlled it. And that's what's crazy about this game, Eddie. Other than, you know, some special teams play, OU really kind of dominated this sure. game in a lot of ways. And there was times where I think they were up 27-17. They get the, uh, what was it, the fumble, the Peyton Bowen forced fumble at midfield. And if That OU, was right on the ball. I mean, yeah. just a perfect play. Yeah, and, you know, if OU goes, they, go, they end up going three and out. But if they would have gone down and scored there, the game's – basically over so uh they really controlled this game and and again it felt like it was going to slip away there and then for them to go straight down the field like that um it was impressive man honesty time texas kicks a field goal to go ahead with minute 17 left you have no timeouts i think that everybody maybe outside of a couple guys over there on that oklahoma sideline or a lot of guys on that oklahoma sideline probably thought it was over if we're going to be just truthfully honest i 100 percent. i was like man they played a really good football game. Uh, it really felt like they played out, outplayed Texas for the first three quarters, and then Texas kind of came alive in that fourth quarter, and it was going to be a heartbreaker. It was like, man, they were so close, but you know, still step in the right direction. And then for them to go down, I mean, and I think we kind of knew Eddie when Gabriel hits Stoops on the one over the middle, uh, and he gets past midfield. You're like, okay, they're going to have a shot at this thing, uh, and then the pass interference on Nick Anderson. That's when I thought to myself. They could score a touchdown here, yeah. they, and they because they had plenty of time. There, I think there was like 40 seconds left 40 in the seconds, game. Yeah, 40 seconds left, and then um, I don't even remember how did they get down to the three. Uh, they had a little run. That's right. And then and then the rest is history. I mean, yeah. it, it it truly was uh, a, a memorable day here at the Cotton Bowl. Seems like anytime that we come down here, uh, you get these types of games. Uh, even in the first half, it it was a hell of a football game. I thought. I, I think nationally, quarter. quarter was chaos i mean i think it was brent said at halftime coming off the field embrace the chaos i mean i that first quarter was over an hour long and sure. it was because there were so many different plays the reviews uh it was just a beautiful football game man I, I people i wish people understood how just special this place is i mean today was just the epitome of it and just so much fun man <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Oklahoma improves to six and zero with a win here at the Cotton Bowl, a uh, a marquee win for Brent Venables' group, and now Oklahoma goes into a bye week. And they're going to have about 13 days for us in the media to kind of talk about where this thing's at. Central Florida, obviously, back in Norman on uh, October 21st. But boy, I mean, where can this thing go now? I mean, they are they're six and zero, and I think that. You could say they're in the driver's seat to get to Arlington now. And, of course, with that comes talk about a college football playoff. Dylan Gabriel's name is going to be in the Heisman Trophy race for sure now. Uh, where can this thing go? I mean, it, it, it's almost kind of a, a pinch-me moment, I think, for Oklahoma fans. Uh, coming off that 6-7 and seven season a year ago, and to fast forward to where this thing is at going into a bye week, boy, you're speeding up the process, right? That's that's what's crazy. It's like a week ago we're talking about ah oh, this team can't win a national title. You know the ceiling for this group is ten and two, maybe a Big Twelve championship if things go the right way. Now you're talking about they could go twelve and zero, Eddie, and I don't think it'd surprise anybody. They're firmly in the college football playoff race. Am I there yet to say they can win a national title? No, but today's a massive step in the right direction, and if you take care of business. Everything's in front of you, sure. uh, and you look across the college football landscape. I think it's as open as it's been in a long time. I mean, Georgia's not playing its best football. Uh, you know, Michigan is looking really good. Ohio State, you know, things are going to play out there in the Big Ten. It's, I mean, it's going to be really interesting. And Oklahoma's got to take care of business, and that's what's going to be interesting to see next, Eddie. And I think the bye comes at a perfect time because they can celebrate this win, and then it's back to reality and say, okay, don't slip up against teams that you shouldn't because they're not going to face a better team, I, I, I don't think, 
a better team than what they face today. And there's a very good chance they see this exact same team again with a chance to go to the playoff at the end of the year. I think there's a lot of people that would sign up for a uh, read match in Arlington oh, yeah. if they get there. Uh, real quick before we get out of here, there's been so much talk about competitive depth throughout the, uh, the, the off season, this early portion of the season. Now you're at the halfway point. McCade Matower goes down. It looked like he broke his ankle in the yeah. game. That sucks. But you had a guy in Caleb Schaefer that was able to just slide in. I mean, you had a freshman uh, How about or a, a second year or a transfer, excuse me, in Schaefer, yeah. as well as a true freshman and Caden Green sliding in there on that offensive line. I, Andrew Ram talked about it after the game, how incredible that was, that he looks to his left, looks to his right, and it's two guys that didn't even start the game with him. The offensive line was, I thought, really good today. They, they were able to run the football pretty effectively. Was Gabriel even sacked today? I don't believe he was. I mean, they were really good in pass protection once again today, again, against a really good Texas defense. Sure. I don't know if they'll face a better defense the rest of this season, except for if they make the playoffs. So um, I thought they were really good. Caden Green, it was interesting. Troy Everett started the game. Caden Green came in, and all of a sudden, OU was able to run the ball a little bit more. Uh, and, and he's such a big body. I, yeah, they were they were really good. You worry about Gentry Williams. He came out, but he, he did do the post game interview. Yeah. I wonder if he's okay. Um, there's a couple other guys that got dinged up. I thought Kendall Dolby played really well today too. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm blacking out, Eddie. I can't remember everything that happened in this game. It, it's it's um, it's crazy. And and hopefully they stay healthy. But again, like I said, I think the bye week. That was such a physical game. I think the bye week really sure. comes at a good time for them. Absolutely unbelievable, incredible. Anything that you want to say about the events that happened out here on the football field today, down at the Cotton Bowl, it's another memorable performance, an Oklahoma victory, and, uh, you know, like you said, I, I'm still at a little bit of a loss for words just as far as the way that that went down and the way that they were able to respond to the adversity of falling behind, and then it seemed like every time that Texas tried to, uh, you know, really assert itself, Oklahoma had an answer for everything today. So it was another special performance, a special day here at the Cotton Bowl, and a truly special day for Dylan Gabriel in a 34-30 victory. And uh, we head into a bye week now as, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting here over the next 13 days how this whole thing kind of uh, the hype certainly going to build. You have Central Florida on the other side. So for George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosevich from the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma wins and improves to 6-0, a memorable day from the Cotton Bowl.